Where there's God, there's no I-ness, there's only we-ness, there's only community. We realize that God is one and there's no I without the one. It's really been our greatest downfall to think that I live as an independent, autonomous, self-thinking person. I'll make my decisions, you know, I'll take the blame for my wrongdoing. And I'm saying there is no I. In fact, science, quantum physics tells us today, oh no, there really is no I. <laughs> you physics, know. What does that have to do with Jesus and yeah, what does right? quantum physics have to do with salvation? What does quantum well quantum physics is to, is probably the best description of what matter is, you know, and if God became matter, then we better know a little bit of quantum physics. Matter matters. Uh, matter matters to God, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing. And quantum physics says, you know. This actually, this is a whole, and like what we call matter is an entangled field of energy, holes within holes within holes. And if you were to just trace, you know, holes, everything. W, not like that's right, W holes, right? Uh, right. And, and, you know, without the holes, that's an interesting, you're uh, without the W. I think a black hole may be equivalent to what evil is, right? It sucks everything into it. And I think the kind of wholeness that quantum physics is about the energy of life, we can say, is the whole that um, expand, you know, that radiates, that expands and, and unifies because itself is so entangled with everything. So I think, you know, best of quantum physics today tells us your I-ness is a we-ness and, you know, even your thoughts belong to the entire cosmos. There's nothing, in, there's nothing private about any of us. It scares us, right? It scares us to think, what, there's nothing private, are you kidding? And what, what we're saying here is that God is in our midst, that we're deeply entangled with one another, that even our thoughts affect um, one another, that if I think I really hate that person, that hatred, a thought of hatred, in terms of the fundamental quantum levels, could actually have negative effects, you know, on, um, on Places around the world. We don't even think that we could be involved in the wars of Iraq or Afghanistan. We don't think that we would have any part to play in the mass migrations of, of the poor, you know, in parts of the world. Like here we are in lovely, you know, North America. What, what does this have to do with us? And the question is, and the thing is everything, you know. What we're realizing, I mean, the work of David Bohm, I think, is really of interest here. He was a physicist, a contemporary of Einstein, who really posited that um, that there's an implicate order, that there's a what we call a holism. You know, that's not a new age idea. That's in a sense what he was observing from his description of, of quantum of quantum physics and, and the quantum field. Uh, and he said the explicate order, which is the order in the external world, is really in a sense the implicate order now expressed on the outer level, so to speak. And in his view, we are holes within holes within holes. And he said, you know, it looks like we're separate, which is something that Einstein said, it looks like we're separate. But in our cosmic roots, we're part of an indivisible whole and share the same cosmic reality. And I think if we, in that cosmic reality, if I were to trace that back to its ultimate roots and depths is God. That's what we're saying. God is, as Anselm said, that which no greater can be thought, than which no, no further than the human mind can go. You know, God transcends. Um, every aspect of our limits. So what you know Bohm and Einstein are saying is unless we realize our wholeness and our belonging to a whole and to realize that God is seeking to become empowers that whole and seeks to become you might say known as the whole within the whole uh, we're on a path of destruction. We're on a path it's downward. It's a downward spiral. Look we either come to a real reality of the world in which we live or we're in denial, we're in extreme denial, and that's really symptomatic of something that's of a deep illness. Evolution is simply the best that science tells us. This is how life moves, it complexifies, it flourishes, given the changes in the environment, given the conditions that change. And, you know, life moves from simple to complex, you know, from cyanobacteria to, to your kitty cat and dog and to, Mozart and Gandhi. I mean, and it's not a straight line of continuity. I mean, there are definitely, there's complex levels all along the way. Um, and we're saying God is quite at home in that, you know. In fact, God, God thought it was good enough to keep going. 
And, and so we've had this idea that God creates this fixed universe when God is really quite at home with chaos and unknowingness and openness and future. Because I think God enters, you know, God loves uh, the spontaneity of newness.